Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Continuing on with our team of the year, we are going on to our right back now. Huge thanks to Luke Jennings who's come in to join us to help us pick. Uh, as part of our panel, uh, we're going to pick our right back of the year. Um, we gave you guys a chance to to uh, let us know who you wanted and kind of vote in in case there was anyone that we left out and you kind of felt like we left out. There was obviously some silly mentions, which you always get regardless. But uh, we we have a, a short list of who we are going to kind of debate and some honourable mentions. So I suppose we'll start with the honourable mentions. Is there anyone that kind of stands up to you that was that was decent but not up to the, I suppose, final three in that aspect. I know you're a Shamrock Rovers fan. How did you, Ethan Boyle, he got signed this, this season. Um, I was never aware that he was like 20. I thought he was about 40. But, uh... <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's right. to be honest, when Simon Madden left, it was it was really big boost to fill. Simon's up and down that wing every week, attacking and defending, so it was a big task for, as you said, Ethan's only 20, so for a young player like him to come and fill them boots with a big club like Rovers, it's tough. So, um, yeah, it was sort of a transitional uh, season for Ethan. He played well, but wasn't great, if that makes sense. Um, also, I'm hoping for bigger and better things off next year, but as I said, a good first season. He's involved in the Ireland under-21s as well, so that was positive on his behalf. It's really just... This season sort of like a transitional season, him getting used to playing for Rovers and just grown as a player. So he wouldn't be in my top three, but he'd be an honourable mention, as you said. Johnny? Um, I have a very good honourable mention. You have a very good honourable mention. Uh, there was a, the Bose fans were uh, full flow for Pender as well. Um, have, I, have I robbed your line out there? Oh, no, that was not someone else. Um, who very much, again, you know, Kind of, how would you describe these kind of captain figurehead leadership kind of fullbacks that we've seen? There's quite a few of them scattered throughout the league. Uh, very, very dependable. Probably not the best in, in it from an attacking point of view, but you know, my God, would that guy put in a shift? And even when things weren't going well, he would always, you know, you'd always see him trying and he'd be up and down that wing. Um, I'm trying to think of it was one of these positions where there was actually quite a lot of interest and in just flicking through some of the replies there as well you know this, but the same people kept on going and probably if I'm going honourable mentions it's pro, it's probably Pender yeah unless, unless I think of I think of anybody in, in, in the meantime I think he's a, a missing the really big link here Sean Hoare played right back for a lot of the season and he won, he won player of the month as a, as right back yeah well Gano was out yeah well yeah actually yeah Um, that goal at Pats. I think that was Chris Shields, no? Was that Shields, was it? Okay, scrap what I said there. Uh, but yeah, no. So edited it out. Edited <laughs> gone. It didn't even happen. Um, yeah, and Horror has had a fantastic season. Um, would you put him in right back? No, I'm just saying, as an, as an honourable mention, because he came in, you you can't overshadow the fact that he got play, uh, PFA Player of the Month. Absolutely, PFA, yeah. PFA, PFAI Player of the Month, or whatever it's called. Um <laughs> Player of the Month, anyway, for uh, Electricity League Player of the Month. He won that, um, and he was predominantly playing right back while Gannon was out. For a centre-half to go in there and play a position can be difficult. He went in and mastered it, as well as being brilliant at the at centre-back, and ultimately let, had that led to Daniel Cleary being come, able to play. Back in. into the team for that and phase, then you yeah. go back to when he came back into the team, then Cleary was out and or had to stay in the team because it's purely just down to his form but I, I don't think he can leave Gannon out of that team as well you know so no. <clears throat> um, I think Simon Madden as you touched on as well I think he's a fabulous player I know you're a big fan of him as yeah, well huge, I, yeah. you must have been you must have been devastated he left I sort of scratched my head when that happened um, I saw some Rovers fans are debating look he's 28-29 he's sort of best years are more or less behind him but you see what he did this year for Pats he, Pats as I said had an average season but he was their shining light in a sense. He was one of their best players. And I like what with us when we struggled for years, he was our best player. And you could always say, Look, we didn't play well today, but Simon Madden gave it his all and it's really the case one. He's a great set right back. Yeah, like just thinking out loud here, he's probably Pat's player of the season. Give or take, definitely up for the yeah. for, for that discussion. I know it's uh, I think it'll be more of a thing you kinda of leave to the Pats fans because we We'd probably be looking at it from the outside in. Do you know yeah, well, he, definitely from the from the outside in and from from watching them, he'd be up there. I know as if yeah, he, yeah, he'd be doing no, a I would, I would, uh, um, be far he 
you know, constantly. And even what kind of comes into mind with me is I think it was the Newcastle match we were down there. Like he, he more than held his own there and was bombing, still bombing up and down that wing as he seems to constantly do. Like I know people mention his age, whatever, but he's he's up and down that. He's, he's never like, injured either. Yeah. He played every minute of this season for Pats. Yeah, no, he's been, you know, and put in some extremely remarkable performances in that. Um, and is definitely on the shortlist for, from my point of view. Yeah, and then the obvious two then, other than that, playing at the top. Is there anyone I forgot? Stephen Beattie, I think. Yeah, well, that's who I was, yeah. I was, I was alluding yeah. to. But yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just thinking, is there if there's anyone... Did you I'm just going to flick through some more there <laughs> as well. While, while, you, while you're chatting away there, I'll, I'll have a flick yeah, through. Yeah, I mean, look, Beattie, for... You've got to give credit, as we were talking about Sean Hoare, playing, you know, that that position yeah. uh, as a centre-back. Beatty's ultimately an He's attacker. He's a winger. Yeah. He's an attacker. Yeah. And he's playing there. And I thought, you know, barring maybe one game against Dundalk up there, um, the game we were at up in Oriel. Other than that, I didn't... Uh, he struggled in that game. But other than that, I mean, he's up against Michael Duffy, I'm, I'm almost certain. Yeah, it was, and Corko. Well and truly outplayed on that in that game as yeah. well. Yeah, but he didn't look like he was getting a lot of help from his winger either way. But every other game I've watched, I and mean, if you watch a lot of like Soccer Republic and stuff like that, he does tend to set up a lot of goals, and he does. Uh, he's a fine way right footing him. Yeah, and he gets he gets forward well and he gets back well, and you know that position is a very very hard position. And I, I, you're ultimately on these days. You're ultimately another winger like that you have to be, but you also have to get back and defend. So I think he deserves massive credit. You know, coming off a huge season again, won the double there. Mm. You know, I think he deserves massive credit for going in there and not really complaining, just happy to play and happy to do well. You, you, you like people think this season's been a total disaster for Cork, but they're still in the cup final. Yeah. You know, so yeah, like uh, as you said, arguably out of position, but you know the fact that he's kind of summed up the the Cork fans as well. You can see the appreciation they have for him, and um, he really, really encaptures. And I think even today, I noticed a comment said he'll he'll never play for another team in Ireland. You know that that's it. That like he's well and truly set, settled in down in down in well, Cork. I think that's because he wants to go to um, America. As I remember, we had him on the show. And yeah, well, I mean, we, we, there's another interview there which you can find out here as well. I'm sure there'll be no, we'll yeah. share another link to it. But uh, I think like I was the, the point I was making was he's kind of encaptured the spirit of him well and truly embedded himself. Um, the fans love him. Um, you know, he's put in a lot of a lot of hard graft. You know, a lot of the dirty work as well. That you know. Winger, other people would have maybe moved out of position or whatever wouldn't necessarily have done, and you know has a, has had a fine season and definitely is in my in my shortlist as he's, well. He's essentially a manager's dream because wherever he gets played, he gives a hundred percent, and there's no there's no you don't really see any complaining out of him. He just sort of gets on with it. It's like the League of Ireland's Phil Neville. I think that's disrespectful, really. I thought oh. Phil Neville was a fabulous player. Actually, he's a twat, but there you go. <laughs> Well, I'm an Everton fan, so I, 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 think, I think Phil Neville was a great player. And he could play in a, num- a number of positions and play it very well and always give his best. And yeah. he, was, he was a leader. I do think Stephen Beattie for uh, Cork is a leader in their team and he doesn't accept anything other than, you know, 100%. So definitely up there for me wouldn't be my pick. Hmm. I think it's, it's glaringly obvious and... You know, he got into the team of the year. And I don't think that, you know, if even if we try to drag it on any longer, I think Sean Gannon is yeah. the out and out. I just want to say, say one thing and put in here rudely. When we were genuinely completely neutral on all this, when we were picking each, well, personally, when I was picking each position, team affiliation went out the window. It was player best on, or picked on their merits and performance of the season. So it wasn't if I'm going to say, oh, we can't have so many from this team or can't, where it sometimes happens in votes like this. Um, very Lee. Yeah, I think that's a kind of no disrespect. That's kind of a an example of we need to try and push push one out more or whatever. But very much picked picked him on the, and like uh, my. I think we're all in agreement. I'm going to take the line with. Who's tell who's us, your, Luke. Who's your first first choice right oh, back? It has to be Sean Gannon. Like he's been outstanding. Like he was playing for Pats and he was second string in Pats to Gerald Bryant at the time and. Stephen Kenny took him up and everyone was thinking God a young player was that Rowers didn't really make it was that Pats didn't really make it and he just he's really come on leaps and bounds and he, they signed him down to a three year deal there last year and they're really I say Stephen Kenny's looking back on that decision now and t- counting his lucky stars because he's been truly outstanding this season every single game he's he's just a breath of fresh air really to watch 
Yeah, he's he's, quality, he's fantastic. Quality right and back. a very nice fella too. Absolutely. To go with that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I I I'm picking him. Um, hundred percent, no doubt about it. Uh, if I'm gonna go three, two, one, it would be um BZ, Madden, and Sean Cannon. Same as. That's for me. That's my three. Can I, I can't try go throw a spanner in the works and say? Ethan Boyle. No, Ethan Boyle. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say third would be Stephen Beatty, second Derek Pender, and first Sean Gannon. Because I just think Derek Pender, not the fences, Rob Cornwall, Dan Casey, and Darryl Lee, they're all young players. He was sort of like the veteran in that defence, and he really led the line well and was a great leader in that both team. So I just, that's why I put him second. Oh, fair enough. Let us know your thoughts. Actually, it'd be interested to see your 3 2 1 as well, uh, in terms of the if you had a your own little short list that you, you chose. Let us know in the comments. That's been our pick. Sean Gannon is our right back of the year. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button now. And if you never want to miss a video, click the bell for alerts. For all our other social media platforms, check out this list below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Having a little bit of a debate in my head.